day we bring you another story from the Lost Treasures of Montana book series by Peter Netzel. This one is from the Lost Treasures of Montana Gold West Country Volume 1. Gold West Country encompasses the southwest corner of the state of Montana. It is made up of the counties of Beaverhead, Broadwater, Deer Lodge, Jefferson, Lewis and Clark, Madison Powell, and Silver Bowl. Gold West Country is broken into two volumes in Peter Netzel's Lost Treasures of Montana series. This book, Volume 1 of Gold West Country, covers the lost treasures of Beaverhead County and Madison County. Today's story is called The Marked Tree. But first, a word about the protagonist in this tale, Henry Plummer. One of the themes covered in this book is the role that outlaw gangs played in Montana's lost treasures. One of the most notorious of these outlaw gangs was led by a fellow named Henry Plummer. He lived at a time when a major gold boom was taking place at Bannock, Virginia City, and Nevada City in Montana. Plummer, an ex-convict, gambler, and outlaw who had been operating elsewhere, followed the gold seekers to Montana. Temporarily outrunning his bad reputation as an outlaw and murderer, Plummer was even made sheriff of Bannock and neighboring Virginia City. Henry Plummer was not what he appeared to be to the citizens. He ran a criminal gang as a source of wealth. Although sworn to uphold the law and apprehend bad men, Plummer surrounded himself with dishonest cronies and he continued his life of robbery and murder with and through these men, directing them and protecting them from behind his badge. Lawman Henry Plummer was playing both sides of the law, but he was leaning very heavily to the wrong side of it. Local residents began to be suspicious of him. The innocents, as his gang was called, were a tight-knit and ruthless bunch. They would kill anyone who might be a witness to their crimes and talk openly of their suspicions. Taking matters into their own hands, their mission was to rid the area of its thugs and murderers. In the course of their outlaw activities, the Plummer Gang of road agents hid much of their loot. A sizable portion of this stolen money and gold was never recovered, especially because doomed men refused to tell where it was stashed. The secret of their caches went to the grave with the hanged men. We return you now to Peter Netzel and his presentation of the story, The Mark Tree. Today's Lost Treasures story is called The Mark Tree. There was, according to uh, one brief mention of a lost treasure of Henry Plummer's in Beaverhead County, $150,000 in silver and gold buried by a tree that was marked. So anyway, for years we never found nothing on this treasure lead, and one day we found the article that shed a whole new light on the story. So, in 1904, a man was chopping wood in the Centennial Valley. And he was about a quarter mile west of the old Solomon River Trail. And he, chopping wood, he came across this tree with Henry Plummer, 1862, carved in it. So, he, his man, name was uh, C.R. Engel. And so he chopped the tree down, but he didn't know about the treasure legend, but he kept the portion of the tree. And so 10 years later or so, he gave them to his brother-in-law, Mr. Ross Ney of Grant, who presented it to a professor at the old Dillon Normal School College. And so there was a uh, supervisor, uh, Wyman, for the Forest Service that looked this tree over, this portion of tree, and he determined that it was roughly 60 years old and that at the time it was much smaller when Plummer 1862 was carved on it. And he reasoned that in all probability, Henry Plummer himself carved his name on the tree. Uh, the tree had grown since it was carved 
that much was evident, but the exact location where the tree was, was lost. So anyway, the uh, Tribune displayed this portion of the tree for some period of time, probably during the time period of the article running, and then it became a donation to the uh, Beaverhead County Museum in Dillon, where it can still be seen today. So anyway, that portion of the story, that piece of tree that was associated with a lost treasure cache of Henry Plummer is still in existence. And the last, uh, earlier this summer, I called that museum and they had seen a PDF sample of our book, which had the story with the picture of the tree and they go, that's in our museum. So it's still there. So anyway, our marked tree story from our book also contains another relic of Henry Plummer, and that is his shotgun. So Henry Plummer had a shotgun that according to some sources was damaged in a way. It was not an expensive shotgun, uh, but he used it all the time. Since he was, came from California and Idaho, he brought it with into Montana and Bannock. So anyway, there was a period of time where Plummer had used the Goodrich Hotel and he ran up a $275 bill. And so once he was hung, Goodrich, who didn't get paid his money, went over to the office where Plummer used as a, as a sheriff's office in this one business. And Plummer's shotgun was laying on the counter where he always kept it. And he picked up the shotgun and he took it as partial payment on the unpaid hotel bill. So later on, he sold it for $50 to one other gentleman. And then he turned around and sold it to another fellow for the same $50. I believe that fellow was Amid Bassett, who was mentioned in the article. And he had a, a tour group from the teacher's college there in Bannock. And at the time, the shotgun was apparently locked in a safe and no one was around that had the combination. And he wanted so much to show them the shotgun that he donated it to the college, which uh, eventually, it, while it was there in Dillon, uh, plans were at the time, because this article is years old, were to take the shotgun and donate that to the State Historical Society. So. Anyway, from our story, Mark Tree, we have one piece of tree marked Henry Plummer, 1862, that was supposedly a marker for a buried cache. And the story also includes what happened with the shotgun of Henry Plummer. And I believe that's probably with the uh, Montana Historical Society or either with the Beaverhead County Museum. So anyway, a little bit of plumber history, a plumber trivia, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you can uh, check out more about our books on our Facebook page, Lost Treasures Montana. Hope you join, like, and share. We uh, update that with uh, treasure story briefs, as well as we're starting to do YouTube videos. To find my YouTube videos and channel, simply go to YouTube and type in my name, Peter Natzel. Or, once you find a video, simply subscribe and you won't miss any of them. So, if you want to check out our videos, uh, you go YouTube and you can just type in MT Tired Man or Lost Treasure Montana and just scroll through and you'll end up starting to find some of our stuff. So, hopefully people... Uh, subscribe to our videos and uh, we hope to hear some nice comments and we hope that uh, people share them with other people that are interested. And so, till then, till next time, have a good day. Bye.